Hi, and welcome to History Makers TV. I'm Matt Prater. Several years ago, History Makers Radio began. In one night, I got the opportunity to interview Kevin Rudd, John Anderson, Marina Pryor, and Tim Costello. I got to ask them questions about how their faith influenced their public life. And I sent it out to a few different Christian radio stations. They all said they wanted more. So we turned it into a weekly radio program. It's now broadcast on over 600 different radio stations around Australia and the Pacific, and it's podcast on iTunes and downloaded and listened to all around the world from historymakers.tv. We decided recently to turn it into a TV show. Uh, some of you may remember I had a bit of an opportunity to ask a question of Kevin Rudd recently on ABC TV. Let's go to our next question. It's from Matt Prater. Hi, Prime Minister. I'm a pastor of a local church and work for a national Christian radio network. Uh, most of the uh, listeners and callers we've had in our radio station uh, have been saying they won't be voting for you because they're disillusioned because you seem to keep chopping and changing your beliefs uh, just, just to get a popular vote with regards to things like marriage. Why should we vote for you? Well, on the question of uh, marriage equality, uh, you're right. Uh, I took a uh, position about, I think, three, four, five months ago, well before coming back to the Prime Ministership, because I concluded in my conscience, through an informed conscience and a Christian conscience, it was the right thing to do. And Kevin Rudd has defended his position on same-sex marriage after being challenged by a Brisbane pastor during a TV appearance. For you, Kevin, if you call yourself a Christian, why don't you believe the words of Jesus in the Bible? Well, okay, mate, thank you. Well, mate, if I was going to have that view, uh, the Bible also says that slavery is a natural condition. <laughs> if you think homosexuality is an unnatural condition, then frankly, I cannot agree with you based on any element of the science. And it's amazing the feedback we got after we raised a topic about the Bible on TV. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're using this platform of TV because we found some people that, have, that are history makers, that have got some amazing stories to tell. And that's what we're going to bring to you here on this series of History Makers TV. Thanks for joining us today. Don't go anywhere. There's another amazing guest coming up soon on History Makers TV. Today we're speaking with Ian Watto Watson, author of the book, Every Bloke's a Champion, Even You, and one of the founders of the Men's Shed Nights all around Australia. It's good to have him on the show today. How are you, mate? Very well, thanks, Matt. Good to be here. It's good to have you along. Now, for those who don't know what a men's shed night is all about, tell us, what, what do you do there? Usually a pretty safe, non-judgmental place where blokes can feel free to listen to other blokes who are courageous enough to be able to share a bit of their journey of their life. Uh, usually the part that's um, some of the hard parts or the dirty parts of their life that they need to uh, flush out and uh, get free of. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I understand you had a whole bunch of different guests over the years. I've heard of Shane Webke from the Brisbane Broncos, uh, Sean Hart, former of the Brisbane Lions, he's now, yeah. I think, assistant coach at the Suns. Uh, you've had um, Duncan Armstrong, former Olympian. Yeah. Uh, you've had you know, all sorts of different celebrities over the years. What do they share? What's the message that they bring when they, when they speak at a men's shed night? Well, they have high profiles, and we have um, plenty of... Um, uh, what would you call them, academics, doctors, uh, professional men who also fit into the same category, politicians, whatever. But they, deep down, basic man wants to just be bloke and be in a comfortable place. Aussie bloke, you know, we don't want it too fancy. Mm -hmm. we want to, you know, we want to be able to just bring something back to manhood to encourage each other. The Aussie bloke's a really good bloke. Mm. He's basically shy. That might be a big statement, but... One on one, he's a ripper of a guy. He really is a man who goes deep and he's got heart and he really wants to get down to that place. But the usual day to day stuff, we never get a lot of chance to go down there. But shed happens when we do that. Mm. So you get together on the night and you have a, 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 you know, a, a hamburger, you have a sausage sizzle, you have uh, a few interviews through the night where blokes get to share their hearts and everything. Mm. Um, how did you start to get uh, the vision for these men's shed nights? Because you were a truck driver trainer for years. Yeah. Tell us how you got into this. Well, I, I've spent uh, a lot of time in churches with men and always felt there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of men missing 
and I've spent a lot of life in my footy. I love AFL football, mm -hmm. and, and I love manhood. And uh, we tried a thing called the Scrubbers Night once, where we just got some blokes together and we just bashed out over a book called Maximise Manhood. And it was a pretty black and white sort of a book, but it was great. It was, it was a, a book where you could be challenged on it. And then we moved on to, we, we called uh, the next thing a burger bash, and we had it in the car park. And one night we had this burger bar bash in the car park of the Petrie Lutheran Church at the time, and Sean Hart was playing footy with my boys at the Maine Tigers. And he'd, uh, he'd won the Norm Smith medal, and the first time he'd actually uh, was publicly able to say, uh, Jesus is Lord of his life. And uh, so we had about 89 blokes in the car park and there were about eight blokes standing out on the footpath and they wouldn't even come into the car park of the church. And it was almost like God was showing me, saying um, those blokes have got issues in their life, some, for some reason, go to where the blokes are. So that's how it come. Um, and my, my business of truck driver training, which has been for 24 years, where I've had thousands and thousands of men uh, in all different uh, categories of truck, but the basic guts of that is that one on one with a gear stick in the middle, about eight to ten hours, and you get to trust the guy beside you. And man, in eight to ten hours, an Aussie bloke can go right down into the deep part. So that's how it happened. And then we, we kicked off with 20 odd blokes at my truck yard, um, and we it just happened. But we, we want to make it blokey. The burgers have got to be good. You do not ask an Aussie bloke to a anything unless you give him a fair dinkum burger. <laughs> so we want blokes, no matter what they believe or where, where they're at in status, to be able to come and be uh, comfortable. And if they sit there and say nothing for four years, who, who cares? Mm. You know, they're blokes. Um, so that's how it all happens. And we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to get lost in organisational bull that uh, is mm. crippling a lot of our wonderful country. So that's mm. bloke, that's Aussie bloke. Now, it's a great way to get blokes to hang out together and to share what's going on in their lives. Because, I mean, you put a couple of women together, they'll sit down and they'll talk to the cows come home. Yeah. Blokes, we like to kind of, you know, stay at arm's, arm's length and don't really like to open up with people. Um, are you finding that when the blokes get together in community more and more, they're able to share a bit of their life journey with each other more? Oh, Matt, I, I reckon blokes are, are genuinely... Um, they're desperate to get right inside, and they'll actually go quicker, deeper than women. Uh, big call, yeah. but a bloke's got to be safe before he spills it. And James 5:16 says, "Confess your sins one to another, so you may be healed." What's that mean to a bloke, Aussie bloke? You don't go quoting that sort of stuff. You just say, "Hey, mate, spill your guts, get rid of the crap, and get to be sorted out, so it can be the real deal who who you are." And bugs just go, "Wow, how's that?" And so keep it simple, stupid, and blokes just get straight into it. Mm. Oh, yeah, there's, there's uh, well, I don't know, Shane Webke was at Shed. I think there were about 240 blokes there, and he went, oh, well, I don't usually talk like this, but oh, I feel safe here tonight. And I was in my truck yard, and I thought, Shane, have a look at this. This, this is a full house, and here he is. He's got the courage to go deep, and uh, it helps him mm. because while he speaks it out, it gives him freedom but it also helps every bloke who's got a bit of that tour, a story in them and they go Ooh, that's good so mm. then they go up and go good on you Shane well done <laughs> thanks for that that's now, it. it really is a history making story I mean it started out in your truck yard oh, yeah. in uh, Marumba Downs in Brisbane oh, yeah. and now there's hundreds of them around Australia not in just the major cities in little outback towns and you travel around around the country tell us about the growth of the men's shed movement? Oh, it's just amazing. They're, they're like bushfires all around, and that's a typical Aussie, Aussie bloke. Uh, I'm heading over to Perth uh, a couple of weeks' time, and there are five active shed nights, like with 150 blokes down to 50 and 60, and that's only over the last couple of years. And they're, um, yeah, they don't, want, they don't want me to come over there and actually help them, encourage them in actually doing the interviews of the shed, mm -hmm. because that's the real guts of a good shed where the person doing the interview can actually get the gold out of the man and not go on too long with it and mm -hmm. just let it happen and not be interrupted by any questions from the floor. You, you ask your questions when we finish, you know. Mm. Yeah, that's so, and, and down in South Australia and Victoria, uh, I've been invited up to um, Rocky. There's five active sheds up there and early next year they want to have like a district get together 
and then like over in Perth and down in Adelaide. Oh yeah, and you know Aussie blokes aren't about. We don't need to publicise these things so much. So one day my dream to have the stadium full of men and that we all come together, that'll happen. That's mm. that's just a matter of the day. Uh, I say the big fella or the bloke upstairs says, uh, right out fellas, stand up, we're going to the cricket ground or, and there'll be a hundred thousand Aussie blokes there just hanging out together going, yeah. Mm. And they've all got golden stories within them, you know. And mm. you know, Matt, you can argue about a bloke's footy team, you can argue about his theology, you can argue about a lot of things, but you cannot argue with a man's story. Mm. And a man's story is his story, and when he's safe, he tells it. And we learn from each other, so mm. that's good. And I know that uh, you and I talk on Vision Radio a bit, and often we'll get on one of your mates from a different part of the country that's a part of the, the Shed Nights, and they'll tell a bit of their story. And another mutual friend of ours, Steve Grace, has been touring around all the sheds. Does music play a big part in the Shed Nights? Not a lot. Most blokes can't sing, but we like to listen to somebody who can. Mm. And Steve's a beauty. Like, uh, and he doesn't... Steve shed, uh, a Shed Night with Steve is really a couple of songs and then a real gutsy, down-to-earth interview mm. with uh, where he is going, what he, where he is. So his journey can be different in different parts. Mm. You know, and it's not a performance. Shed is not a keynote speaker. Mm. You might get a keynote speaker, uh, but he, he, you're actually hearing his, uh, hearing the inner part of his gold mm. the night he talks. He's, mm. Yeah, so it's good. Mm. And we want to keep it that way because we, we get uh, schoolboys come, uh, young boys can come and confidently listen to the stories of men and they love it and they learn. You, you know, you never have a, say if the interviews go for an hour and a half, you never have to say to the boys, hey, sit down, don't do this and don't do that. The boys just sit there and they listen mm. because they need, to, there's things that boys need to learn from men. Yeah. And out of this, you've written your own book. <laughs> um, Every Bloke's a Champion, Even You, from Liam Watto Watson. You've written this book and you've, you've kind of uh, shared a bit of your life story. Tell us a bit about how this came about. Yeah, well, um, the opportunity to go and speak and encourage men all around the country on different topics, you know, I'm, I'm a... I'm just an encourager, but you know, I've done the journey of life in lots of areas, and um, I wanted to, I wanted to be able to write a book to Aussie blokes predominantly, and this hasn't got, uh, there's no restriction. Uh, there's plenty of academics out there that don't do a lot of reading of books with men, so the book had to be the right number of pages, some pickies in it some interesting things, so a bloke can just pick it up and read a bit and put it down and not feel like. Uh, he, he's guilty if he doesn't read it, but you know, every day I got a text there today, uh, some bloke, one of our blokes down in Horsham Mary in Victoria has given my book out. It's the book you can give to the bloke down the road, uh, and the even new part of the, the title's for women, because it, you know, it reads both for women, and we certainly, we, at Shed, we definitely don't bag women. We actually want to be better in who we are as men so we can actually love women and be loved by women mm. and, and love and respect women and so the book has been a fantastic journey it's not yet been a year out and um it's it's going all over the highways and the byways i actually put a box of 40 books in the post today to go to ali kerrang which is 375 k's north of alice springs because one of my mates up there he's run out of books mm. and he mm. passes them on too mm. And, and you've also got the, uh, the audio CD for lazy blokes like me that don't have, have as much time to read books. So you, you voiced this yourself too, didn't you? Yeah, well, yeah. that came as a result of guys that drive trucks and big uh, headers and things and mm. in properties. And they said, could you put your voice on that? It's mm. so a six hour listen. And um, the chapter's about 25. And there are actually mm. blokes around the country that are listening to the book, a chapter of the book, mm. and then having a good talk about it. And it just encourages a bloke to become real. Mm. And if you get through and you get to chapter nine, I guarantee you that chapter, uh, sorry, if you get to chapter 12 and you get to do hearts of trumps, that's the best thing for an Aussie man because he gets to go from his head down into his heart. And then when he open, he's able to speak from his heart, then he's, uh, he's so good for his family and those around him. Mm. And that's the book. And, uh, it's been a great journey. It's great. Well, Ian Watto Watson, it's been great to have you with us on History Makers TV. I reckon you're a history maker. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. Sure.